Man, uh, it looks like Twitter was uh, bought by Elon Musk. So we're going to have Tesla style Twitter coming up. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to see if that makes a difference to anybody, especially the black folks, because, you know, there is a thing that we have that has been labeled black Twitter. Oh, facts. So does black Twitter get affected by Elon Musk? Hmm. All right. We're going to talk about that. Also, uh, Meg Thee Stallion. Um, the victim has been getting victimized is what it's been looking like uh, what do, do we believe at all does, does it matter uh, why, why are we supporting or not supporting this black woman that got uh, pinky toed um, and then <laughs> <laughs> pinky -toed. DJ Envy is also in the news we're going to discuss that as well um, with this trend of folks that we have these couples where the wives are you know, getting out here on these interviews and, and, and saying some shit that's kind of mm -hmm, starting some mm -hmm. other shit when he get back mm -hmm. to his male circles. We know. Kind of. Will Smithish. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little, got a little red table-ish in there. <laughs> right. Meg Thee Stallion uh, is in the news because um, her and the Tory Lanez thing just won't stop. So she was on <laughs> Gayle King not that long ago. And uh, that shit went viral because apparently she didn't sound like she was being truthful about everything. You have an intimate relationship with him? Like sexual? Yeah, yeah. Did you, have, <laughs> did you Megan, <laughs> did you have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez? Yes, that's my question. Um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tory. Coca Brown, does that sound like they did something or what? Man, look, you know, she's at that age. <laughs> where they still are trying to hide, you know, protect their virtue. You know what I'm saying? When you get to my age, I'd be like, yeah, I screwed him, but you know, it wasn't all that. I mean, like, she's still trying to, to make herself look innocent in the whole deal. Does nobody pause that long? Either you were in me or you weren't in, in the discussion. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I can understand what what Megan was coming from because if he licking her ass and that's all, then is she really in a sexual relationship with him? You know what I'm saying? He might be licking her ass. If he licking her ass, it might not be a sexual relationship. Just like some people think. You know, I'm not saying. Ain't cheating. I ain't eating. Well, damn. Okay. Well, if you're only eating, is that cheating? I guess that's the question right, there, you know right? If you're only eating, is it cheating? There you go. <laughs> right. So yeah, I think she probably did some, but probably. Don't look at it as we was committed. So it wasn't an intimate relationship. You think they did something or what, Bo? I mean, yeah. You, of course they did, because she's not going to take a bullet from a nigga she ain't fucking. So, I mean. <laughs> I would hope not. I would I'm, hope I'm not. Just, I'm just shocked she can still twerk with half a hoof. <laughs> she got like a size 12 though so she still got a 10 so she good she's good to go wow. Wow. That's true. <laughs> so apparently yeah he got out in in uh over the wind her what she said she he jumped out over the window and started firing and and saying dance bitch which is what you're supposed to say when you're shooting at somebody's feet. Uh, just per <laughs> that's <laughs> me. Okay, that's a <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, DJ Envy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him or not, yep. but he's on The Breakfast yep. Club. Him and his wife went on an interview. His wife told this lady on, on the national worldwide internet for the first 10 years that they were having sex, she faked orgasms. They justified it by saying that they were young and they were just getting started. Uh, he was doing the best that he could and uh, <laughs> she didn't know she didn't know how to help him do it. She says a lot of women suffer from shit like that. I'll start with Coca Brown first. Is this a no, thing? I, I couldn't be so lucky. I just feel like I would have got choked the hell out in front of everybody. I don't know. I don't know. The kind of dudes I deal with, you know, it used to be a thing called decorum. 
Mm. That you just were to say certain things, and that is out the window. All bets are off. I don't care how long I've been married to you. I don't care how much money we got, how much status, how much clout. All bets off. Women are leeching. Like they, it, I don't know if it's if it if, 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 if it's some kind of feminist movement going on. I just wouldn't be as lucky. I feel like the type of men I deal with, I'd have lost two. So, um, no. <laughs> that, that ain't cool at all. <laughs> Pierre, what you think, man? Uh, Ten years, is that too much? No, come on. T to me, it doesn't matter if you have an orgasm or not. As long as we stay together and we, we have a productive family and we're raising them. If she wants to stay in a relationship where she's having to have to fake the orgasm, it's a more about him and what he's provided for her and been the good father or husband. That it matter. It, to her, it didn't matter. Now she can say it now because it's in the past. Now she gets her orgasm. So what's what's the harm of the past? It's not like she's saying today I'm not getting no orgasm. She's talking about the past. Let's be real. So to me, I mean, I'd rather have somebody who fakes it and loves me and and, and, and stays with me opposed to somebody who has an orgasm and, and cheats on me. So I don't mm. see a problem with that at all. Damn. Okay. We're um, talking about 16 to 26. Yeah, that was yeah, the man. ages. So right. you know, you know, young oh, shit. so they got the married when they was sixteen and fifteen years old. N maybe not married, but that's when they started smashing. Apparently, right. at sixteen, he might not have known what to do. That's a whole Rubik's cube down there that you got to learn how to figure okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> my, I guess my thing is this: is, is is this a new thing that you're supposed to come out and have these wide open conversations? Uh, about things like yes. this with people. I mean, is, 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 are we supposed yeah. to do this? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We are <laughs> a completely transparent, no hose yeah. barred, no decorum, no filter society right now. Absolutely. Let's just say he wasn't DJ Envy. Let's just say he was just dude. You know what I mean? And this is his old lady. And they went on... Uh, we toning down all everything. Facebook Live without any celebrity status is is this the forum to air out your laundry when it comes to But 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 you're taking the main main element out. They're famous. I, I know DJ Envy, so I can't use this but I'm not bragging, but I, he know I know him. But does he know you? Does he know Bodacious? Does he know what's name? But we talking about them. They're relevant, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what it makes it. They're relevant. You know, so and that was about in this business being relevant. And I hate to say it, not being great or good, but being relevant. That people are talking about you and we're talking about them. So where are they going wrong with it? Because we don't like it. You ain't gotta talk about you and your wife. You know, Coco ain't gonna talk about her and her man, but they're talking about it and we're talking about them. If we didn't stop talking about them, maybe they wouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I can't be well, mad at them. People, you know, you go on TikTok right now. And I know about 30 people who I've never met a day in my life's personal business. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go, you go on random IG live and somebody on there crying, talking about, I don't know why he don't want me no more. Right, like, right. Right. So, I mean, you ain't even gotta be famous no more. People just want to be maybe heard or seen or relevant, like Pierre said. Damn, bodacious, I'm gonna let you jump in on that, man. Do you, what, what you see wrong or right with this situation or how this happened? I mean, honestly, this wouldn't even be relevant if they would just keep their business in the house like like grown folks usually used to do. Um, sure. Maybe that gave her an orgasm, telling the world that he doesn't give her an orgasm. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I'm so sick of this petty and, and toxicity shit that's going around, man. Like, it's a lot of women that get off on, on getting on these platforms and, and letting their man have it. And I, I don't know when that became a trend, but it, it's not cute at all. It's creating a trend that, that uh, a lot of young girls are going to follow. So you're going to be hearing stuff like this in the in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of the pettiness and I'm, I'm sick of uh, toxic women and toxic men doing stuff like this to, to people they supposedly care about. It's It ain't funny. This shit is really sad, man. How about that? He went and got serious on me. <laughs> Look, all right, Coco Brown, Pierre, thank you so much for kicking in. I got all, I got, I, I know how you feel about it. I know how you feel about Meg the Stallion getting pinky toed. I know how you feel about DJ Envy and his old lady uh, discussing uh, th them coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they come history. Or not, you did. <laughs> Right. 
Arkansas McGraw, big bad buddy Lewis. Uh, I appreciate y'all for popping up there. Buddy, wake hey. up. Look at that, buddy, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> y'all think I'm bullshit, do you? Watch this. <laughs> but he was knocked out. But, but we gonna keep the show going. There. Yeah, he up he there. Like, gonna, I'm gonna keep him right there. You think let I'm him <laughs> Get up, buddy. No, let him go. We gonna keep on going like nothing happened. And when he wake up, nigga, he's gonna he gonna he gonna be he gonna be like, oh huh? shit. Huh? 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 <laughs> He going to text him, say, thanks for doing the show. Yeah, I'm going to definitely text him and tell him to do <laughs> Let's go ahead and start this, man. Uh, this is going to be hilarious. Uh, so, Esau, do you think that black Twitter will be affected by Elon Musk buying Twitter? What you think, fam? I, I think it's going to get better because a nigga named Elon on that motherfucker now. <laughs> Elon is already on Twitter, nigga. You don't know who on that motherfucker, man. It's about a hundred thousand niggas named Elon <laughs> on Twitter. Like, oh, nigga, that's my shit. That's my shit. Elon must sound like the king of the school. Like he'll beat your, he beating your ass at three o'clock. You know, Elon after your ass. Elon does have a have have bully vibes to it. Elon Musk just did the most gangster. You ever go to a club and they won't let you in? Mm. Every I don't give a I don't give a damn who it is. Everybody had a fantasy. It's like you know what I to buy this motherfucker man like 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 fucking Batman did or buy this motherfucker man right there under there on your phone and they just be like man move out the way and they be like I told you you came in and I like, nigga you don't work here no more move bitch I don't this motherfucker like that's that was essentially what he did. It's like you know he got on Twitter he's like you know I want to say what the fuck I want to how much this shit cost. <laughs> you still ain't let Trump back on that motherfucker yet. No, Trump ain't gonna be back on there for a while. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up, Shout fam? Buddy, Lewis. <laughs> buddy, you up? <laughs> you all right, buddy? buddy? Buddy over there, his legs still sleep. <laughs> <His> legs. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> uh oh. Buddy over there, feet sleeping over there on gummy foots over there. <laughs> You know, when you get over 40, the first first two minutes of you waking up, you are in a total state of discombobulation. Yeah. <laughs> you have no clue. In purgatory between here and the ether. Like you just got hit by a truck. <laughs> you okay, buddy? Hey, buddy. <laughs> this is the greatest shit of all time. I ain't gonna lie hey, to you. Hey, you know what? Here's some funny. You want to hear some funny shit, Jay Phillips? What's up? I used to run up in Buddy Lewis all the time, just run up on him and go, Daddy! Right? <laughs> Turn out Buddy Lewis like four years older than me, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he was in high school at the same time. Uh-oh. <laughs> Buddy finally fell out. <laughs> Let's get this rocking for you, Esau. I want to see what your opinions are on these situations. The whole Meg the Stallion thing, man, with Tory Lanez and all of that. Um, she apparently came on and said they ain't have no sex, but uh, kind of sounded like they did. Um, does that even Tory's matter to you, Esau? What you think really happened? I'm not interested in this conversation because this is an individual who likes to shoot at motherfuckers, and he's at large. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't in jail. He he out. And anybody can come to my shows. They're open to the public. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the real question, because I do mm -hmm. see some some validity in saying, "All right, y'all was too young, um, and you might not have known how to smash yet." So you know, he's not really ashamed. Would you be ashamed of somebody coming on and telling your business like that? Or is it something that you can, that you confident enough that you can go ahead and keep it moving? Nope, I'm not that confident. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a problem if you walk around talking about my, my dick game's trash, bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hell no, not one time ever. Not even on 4th of July that time at the cabin. Bitch, you... <laughs> So that's an interesting point of view. So, do you have that um, that lesbian homegirl that you can go to? Well, I owned a barbershop for 15 years, and Big Shirley used to work in my shop. She used to carry a nine millimeter at the shop. She put the weight bench up in the back. We used to work out. <laughs> <laughs> 
taught me how to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> she taught me how to shoot a gun. I was never shot a gun until she worked there. She taught me how to shoot a gun, man. She taught me how to get rid of a cold in three days drinking Hennessy. She, you know, and she taught me about the Venus butterfly. Oh. It's a, it's a vagina eating technique that can make a woman bust in less than a minute. That sounds like. Google it. I, I, I just might. There's a big difference between theater energy and comedy club energy when it comes to mm -hmm. especially filming and taping and stuff like that. I'm trying to explain the difference between doing it at a, a comedy club as opposed to a theater. Well, you know, you know comedy clubs are a lot more in, in, in energy and in in an immediate response because you write in the people, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, so to speak. They write there, you know, and uh, uh, a theater is a lot more people. And uh, you know the the uh, the the responses are bigger, so the timing is different. Mm. So you know if you got three hundred people in a room and you, and you know you you could be a rapid fire comic, bang 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 bang, and it works in there. You get in the theater with five thousand people, you tell a joke and it resonates through the room. If you're a rapid fire fire theater um, comic, a lot of times you got to understand you're stepping on people's understanding of what you're talking about the next they still laughing at the last bit you know what i'm saying so mm. the time is a little bit slower because the booms are bigger hmm. you know so a lot of times you know i'll go into a theater this a lot of comics will do it they'll go into a theater with club energy mm. and run the fuck out of the light because they don't realize how much they've slowed down because it's so much coming at them and they involved you know and i've done it before you know i'm, I'm in the moment you know what I'm saying? Now I'm killing, killing, killing. And that 12 minute set that I usually do in clubs, that shit took 22 minutes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. type of shit. So that it's happens. a huge difference. You know, you, and it's, you could get hypnotized in a theater in a different way than it doesn't exist in a club. Because, say, if you're in a theater and you got 1,500 people and you tell a joke and 400 people laugh. That's 400 people, a lot of people, you know, so you feel that, you know what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, you know, 1,100 people didn't. Right. And you really couldn't, you really couldn't gauge that to where when you're in a club and you got 300 people and you do a bit and 50 people laugh, you and feel 200 that. people didn't, it's very apparent. <laughs> <laughs> the motherfucking joke didn't work. <laughs> that's that's a fact. <laughs> Saw dog, appreciate you, man. Y'all go check out uh, the headliners on HBO Max. Is that correct? Yeah, HBO Max, the headliners, and I'm also at the that's Comedy good. Store tonight. I mean, not tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night. Um, I'm at the Comedy Store in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, you know, um, uh, at Crack'em Up Thursdays. I used to be the host of Crack'em Up Thursdays, and so did Jay Phillips! I sure did. Well, yes, I, I did. did. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was talking a lot of the stuff about the differences between, um, you know, the theater acts and the comedy club acts. I know we do a lot of comedy club acts, but I know that you have done theaters, but we... We are most definitely uh, on comedy club speed. Is that what, did right. that have any factor in 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 w why you decided to choose the comedy club? Not at all. But what he said was a word, man. Like I I I felt that. Like I didn't even and honestly I didn't even realize that. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I'm just I just do my act, man. I don't really pay attention to to the intricate details like that. But what he said was absolutely right because I I've been you know, in them theaters and doing my comedy club act at that speed, you know, at the RPMs or whatever, and been right. stepping on my own shit. Cause I'm, I'm a rapid fire guy. Like I, you know, my, my whole act is, is LPMs, you know, yeah. last per minute. Yep. So right. I don't ever try to go through dry spells. Like I don't want 30 seconds to pass without me getting, you know, a, a belly laugh. So <laughs> doing, doing theaters, man, it is definitely a difference. And what he said that, like, I, I, I needed to hear that. I mm. really need to hear that. That's dope. <laughs> right.
They bodacious. Y'all go ahead and show Big Brother Bo some last name. Social media is at Bo last name. Yes, sir. That's it. Bo last name. At Bo Mm -hmm. last name. B O and then last name. B O Mm -hmm. last name. Y'all make sure y'all follow my brother over there, man. One love to you, Bo. Last name. Appreciate you. Likewise, man. My man. (laughs) You guys have been absolutely dope. Jamie Jones, tell them. Tell them some good things that they need to know, man. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, Corinne, we love it. We love it all. Real Brothers, shout out to you. I didn't even uh, recognize you over there. Um, the Mayor, Walter, everybody as usual, we love it. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, please like and subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend to like and subscribe to Jay Phillips Live YouTube, youtube.com slash Jay Phillips Live, where every Wednesday night you get the Jay Phillips Live show every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on YouTube. And on Monday night, you get Mind of the Quiet Dude 2.0. Shout out to the Rewatch Gang and everybody that's out there. Follow at J. Phillips Live on all your social media outlets. I am Jamie Jones. One word, Jamie Jones, the number one W-O-R-D on all your social media platforms. Please click the link in the bio and go get you some merch. We appreciate the hell out of you. And we'll see you guys on monday thank you damn right uh thank y'all for tuning in i'll leave you with with my thought of the day my thought of the day is simple um it it is very simple today um be careful of who you keep in your circle be damn sure careful of who you keep in your circle well some of them might be your friends smashing your old lady and shooting them in the pinky toe so for jamie jones who's in my circle i feel protected my man we good my name is jay phillips y'all be great out there and uh i'll see y'all next week how about that